Hey guys, welcome to Digital Screening Channel on YouTube and I am back with another book review. Why? Because the last time I have done one, many of you got back to me and asked for more such reviews. So here you go. This time I'm going to talk about deep learning with FastAI Cookbook. Again, the key here is Cookbook because this gives you a good introduction to FastAI and also provides a few recipes that you can use to practice and then build upon. So this gets you to the point where you're dangerous to explode into uh, uh, into using uh, FastAI for uh, other applications that you are trying to uh, address. And this book is by Mark Ryan and I got it out of Amazon, so I'm pretty sure you can find it uh, on Amazon wherever you live. And as you can tell from my notes, I have uh, gone through uh, gone through this book at least once, and I did uh, mark some of the areas that I have to go back and uh, uh, and and practice a little bit more. And one thing that I like about this is they organize the material content in a very nice way. I should say uh, they start off by talking about uh, exploring and cleaning up uh, the data. And then they slowly go into talking about how to work with uh, text data and also how to work with uh, tabular data. So if you're working with CSV type of files, this can be a great place. And uh, if you also actually are interested in recommender systems, they have a chapter for it. And uh, of course, I am uh, more into image analysis. So they have a, uh, again, another, another topic completely on the vision area. So finally, I also appreciate that they thought about uh, finally because we are building applications so how to deploy and model maintenance so overall i definitely recommend this if you really want to get into fast ai if you don't know what fast ai is maybe you should uh, if you're coming from keras background uh, i know most of my subscribers do because that's where i spend most of my time uh, keras uh, primarily we are using tensorflow as the backend and we don't want to interact with tensorflow that's why we are using keras because it makes our life easy in putting together models in handling uh, data and so on think of fast ai as something similar except it works with pytorch backend of course powered by gpu and uh, I found uh, that fast AI is probably even higher level API, making it easier for those of us who are researchers, scientists, engineers, and uh, marketers, and whoever trying to use coding as, uh, as a tool to uh, solve a challenge or to put together an application. So if we are not in the business of doing research in machine learning, we are in the business of using machine learning as a tool to solve other world problems. If that is where you find yourself, then uh, fast AI can be a great way of uh, easily putting together these, uh, these models. And I am going to go through one of the examples. In fact, I have, uh, I'm not going to type the code in front of you. I have already done that, but I'm going to go through one of the simple examples out of this book, which uses a uh, CIFAR 10 data, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a cla uh, image classification problem, as you uh, probably know. If you think that is too simple, in my next video, I'm going to uh, I'm going to talk about uh, one of the fast AI examples. Uh, I mean, uh, using image classification or doing image classification using fast AI, but on your own data set. So I I'll try to find a data set that I haven't worked with before, maybe like lung cancer classification, for example, and I'll do that. That's completely out of this book, but going through this book gave me enough skills to potentially do that for you guys uh, in my next video. So I definitely benefited from this, so uh, so hopefully you will too. So before wasting a lot of uh, your time, let me go ahead and uh, jump into the code, but again, a quick note about the API. So let me uh, open a PDF document. Uh, I'll share the link with you. Here you go. And it talks about uh, the API for uh, uh, fast AI. Again, you can go through this in detail. One thing I would like to show you is they clearly explain the layered API from fast AI. If you want low level, you can do that. But most of us would like to interact with the high level API that is focused primarily on the applications, which is either vision or text or tabular or collab. Uh, uh, so one of these. I have explored uh, vision a little bit from here. I haven't explored natural language processing or tabular data, but uh, but by interacting with vision, I definitely realized, oh, fast AI is really making some of these uh, uh, more easy 
to put together. So I'll share this link with you and now let me jump on to my Google Colab where I experimented with or where I copied literally line to line from this book uh, for the CIFAR 10 uh, data set. Okay, so uh, first of all, I am going to, again, these lines are uh, installing your fast book right there and then fastai.vision. Look at this vision right there. So all the tools that we're going to tap into that help us do our vision analysis are part of fastai.vision right there. Now, let me give you one critical feedback for this book. One thing that could be better Okay, I'm not saying that's a negative thing. One thing that could be better, especially for the authors, is when you import a couple of libraries and you put the star right next to it, that means you're importing all the methods from each of these libraries. So when I go down, when we use, uh, for example, path equals to untar underscore data, someone, a novice like me, who didn't know much about fast AI before I started reading this book, I have no clue whether that untar underscore data is coming from this fast AI library or if it is coming from fast book library. So uh, authors, it really helps the user, the reader, if you actually uh, get this library, for example, and whatever the ones that you're using, image data loader. So if you clearly spell that out right next, instead of importing everything from this fast AI library. So that's a better uh, teaching opportunity, I should say. Anyway, that's my personal preference. So other than that, of course, <laughs> this is a great uh, uh, organized uh, book, I should say. So little room for improvement there. Okay, so once we install this FastAI, and by the way, here we're not pip installing FastAI because if you're using Google Colab, then FastAI is available by default. Then you'll know that if it throws an error saying, hey, I don't know what FastAI is, you'll know right away. Okay, we uh, set up this uh, uh, fast book, but let me just go down to this place where we are getting the URL for this CIFAR dataset. So FastAI has a few uh, test data sets that you can work with, including CIFAR, MNIST, and some from Natural Language Processing. And they all are uh, provided via a URL. And here we are just reading that URL for CIFAR, and then we are untarring this data. So eventually when you run this, it gives you a path. So when you run the path, it tells you, okay, the data is stored downloaded and stored at this location for you. So this is accessible for you. So now we know that, okay, this is my path for the data. And let's go ahead and train a model. So how first we need to define the model. Now you can train the model using your uh, raw data as is, or you can actually use data augmentation type of techniques. So here I'm defining a data loader. So this helps I can directly use this DLS or this data loader as part of my uh, training process later on. So this data loader contains both the training data, validation data. What does that training data mean? That training data means it's got the actual images and also the labels and validation images and labels. So this contains a lot of information right there. And I'm reading this from folder, from this specific folder right there and I have train and validation right there. Now, in addition to this, you can define a lot more information. You can define, uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, of course, we define the path, you can define your training, you can define your validation, and a lot of other keyword arguments that you can uh, unwrap here, and some of those include transformations, for example. If you want to define a set of transformations, you can also do that as part uh, here. Since we have enough data, uh, I know it is representative for each class, so I'm not going to do any transformations, just read the data as is. Once you have that, now I'm looking inside my DLS into my training data and just show a batch of four images. Yeah, with a number of rows equals to one, so it's just showing me four random images right there. Again, this is uh, this used to be a whole bunch of lines using matplotlib.pyplot, and then you say, okay, this is my data set, and get, uh, get uh, four random images from that, and go ahead and plot it, which is still, of course, fine uh, if you want to do that, but these guys made it a single line and very easy for us to um, do that task. Now comes the most important task of defining a model. How do you define a model? Again, there are many, many ways. Here, we are not putting the model together. Uh, we are actually, def uh, well, defining a CNN learner. If you want, you can put the model together uh, together yourself. But this is, uh, this is one other thing that I absolutely loved. So when you define your CNN learner, you can define your data loader. Remember, the data loader contains the information about our training data set and validation data set, which means it knows the size of my images and how many classes I am trying to 
classify it to because the data loader has that information. So this CNN learner uses that information in putting the model together for us, uh, meaning the first input layer and also the output layer. Uh, the entire structure you can actually define yourself in this case i am getting resnet 18. Uh, this is uh, obviously i'm trying to do transfer learning here so resnet 18 with image net weights and uh, what loss function again many choices label smoothing cross entropy is the one that we are using here and uh, metrics to track while training is accuracy this puts together your model and now we can just do model.summary i call this learn so learn dot summary. So when you do that, very similar to Keras, you can see uh, all the details here. Is a, is a, is a layer uh, trainable? Is a layer non-trainable? If you go all the way up here and come down there, oh, sorry, come down here, you can see how many uh, trainable parameters you have, how many non-trainable parameters you have, and all the information. Okay, now it's time for us to train. How do you train it? There are a couple of ways to train it. If you do fit one cycle, this is like model.train in Keras. This is like, okay, I'm training the entire model. Or you wanna freeze some uh, layers and then train only the other layers. So you can do all of that uh, using fast AI. The best way for this specific example is learn.fine-tune, and fine-tune is only uh, uh, tuning, as the name suggests, uh, uh, some of the layers. And you can, again, uh, under fine-tune, define a whole bunch of other parameters, as you can see up here. I'll save some of this for my next video. And in this video, I just want to make sure you get introduced to this book and Fast AI. And in the next one, I am going to show you what I learned from this book and how I put together my own Fast AI uh, classifier on my own data set. Anyway, so we are doing fine tuning of only the uh, uh, last few layers, and uh, let's do that for five epochs. That's exactly what I have done, where it provided me, th this is the result when I did that. Training loss, validation loss, and accuracy, the best I got was 79%. Okay, now it's time to test. Go ahead and load uh, an image right there, and this image seems to be uh, an ostrich or an emu, I can't tell. And let's do model.predict or learn.predict. It says this is a bird, and if I remember correctly, it is the third one right there, right? So that is the class for bird in C410 dataset, and it's got 70% probability. So let's go ahead and load another random image. Uh, also turns out to be a similar type of bird. Why? Okay. Oh, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, to, to, to get image files. I don't know, let's just do 900, sorry. I don't want to troubleshoot while I'm recording this video, but in, uh, again, another bird right there. Let's go ahead and uh, predict it. And this time it's 91% accurate that this is uh, this is a bird and that's the class it uh, gave us. So very simple, very easy, uh, as you can see. And uh, this is in general, I started to like uh, fast AI and uh, all the knowledge at least up to this point that i gained about fast ai is just by going through this book once and of course i have a plan on going through this a couple more times to get a bit more dangerous before i record my next video so i hope you liked this type of review i know this is a very long review this is not just a one minute two minute video saying this book uh, this book is great or this book sucks or something but i'm going a little bit more detail if you like these type of videos if you like this type of review just let me know. So whenever I uh, I get a new book, well, a new coding book, because I read a lot of books, most of them are non-coding books, but when I get a coding book, I'll make sure I share my experience with you guys. So thanks for your patience and let's meet in the next video. Thank you guys.